And joining me now is Adam Carolla. He's got the best podcast in the country. He's got a new book, I'm Your Emotional Support Animal, Navigating All, uh, all uh, Our All Woke No Joke Culture. And he's also part of a special hosted by Dan Bongino, Cancelled in the USA. And you got his podcast. He's a busy guy. Uh, and he's a self-made man. Adam Carolla, welcome back. Thanks for having me back, Brian. Adam, right right away, we talked about you this morning on what you put up on your feed, on your Twitter feed. And that is, in California, this is true, if you steal shoplift under $1,000, you can't be prosecuted. You put video online that looks like we're in a third world nation. People just walking in, stealing stuff, and walking out. Yeah, I mean, but you have to ask yourself, like, what do we expect? Like, if we tell people, here's what we're going to do in advance, whether it's in San Francisco or it's Los Angeles and it has to do with, the, you know, a Target or a Walmart or at the border, if we just go, here's what we're going to do, here's what we're going to enforce, here's what we're not going to enforce, why wouldn't people just exploit that? I mean, isn't that a lesson we've learned if we tell people We're going to, you know, the cops are going to pull back. Well, then, if you're a bad guy, wouldn't you move forward? I I, I don't think any of this should be surprising to anybody. It's it's how humans work. It's how pets work. It's how kids work. (laughs) You know, if you said your kid, the, uh, you know, the curfew is 10 o'clock at night, but I'm never going to enforce that. I'm going to bed at 930. Would, wouldn't you expect a percentage yes. of kids just to come back after curfew? But it doesn't make your video that you posted less shocking. It It's just because I can't believe this is happening in this country where uh, criminals are being rewarded or ignored and uh, people are basically fending for themselves. So, Adam, uh, you know, your your book comes out and you talk about being fearless. You're basically in your own business. You're not really depending on people, just listeners and viewers and, and people to pay, pay tickets and watch you do stand-up. Are you uncancelable? Um, I don't know if anyone is un... <clears throat> you can always be canceled with your own audience. You know, if you started saying things that were insane to your audience, then you could cancel yourself with your audience. But in terms of how we classically think of being canceled, we think of a parent corporation, a a network or a studio pulling the plug. Uh, In from that regard, I'm uncancelable. And I saw this stuff coming 10 years ago. So I started diverse diversifying my portfolio because I had this feeling this is the way the wind was blowing, and especially you, in Hollywood. Right, uh, where people, really, corporations can't stand by you or they choose not to stand by you. So you said, I'm going to do this thing called podcasting. Now everyone feels as though they're capable of doing something, and, and you were the first to break out, and you still remain on top. So why did you why was it important or okay with you to participate in this special on, on Fox Nation? Well, I- anytime someone wants me to you know, raise my voice about cancel culture, I'm more than happy to do it because it's something that's near and dear to my heart. So I I work in Hollywood. I've seen it happen to a lot of people I've worked with. You know, I I know all the stories you know, but if you live and work in Hollywood, you live in the epicenter of cancel culture. The the people that make the most noise about McCarthyism are practicing a latter day version of McCarthyism as we speak. I'm still don't know why you're there. Why you haven't pulled the Joe Rogan and pulled up stakes? Uh, but Adam, I, I got to bring up to a, a cut from that special. Uh, Gilbert Godfrey, you know him. You do stand up uh, as well. He sure. has done for years. Listen to him. When I hear about another person getting in trouble now, I always think, oh, thank God, them and not me. Because I've I've been through it a few times. Gilbert Gottfried, the voice of Aladdin's irritating bird, Iago, has made a career out of offending his audience for years. He voiced the screechy Aflac duck. Aflac. In the immediate aftermath of a tsunami, Gilbert took to Twitter to share his usual offensive comedy. Japan is really advanced. They don't go to the beach, the beach comes to them. After that, Gottfried became, he claims, one of the first entertainers to feel the speed and force of an online cancellation mob. 
So that's a typical edgy comedian comment. They thought insensitive. He was canceled, lost a bunch of gigs. It's scary, right? I did the, yes. And, you know, Gilbert's a, an equal opportunity offender. I, I did the Hugh Hefner roast on Comedy Central with Gilbert literally 10 days after 9-11 in New York City, and he was making 9-11 jokes. Now, you can say, oh, I, that doesn't sit well with me, or I don't like the taste that leaves in my mouth, but that's what he does. Yep. He takes tragedy, and he makes jokes about it, and traditionally, that's what comedians do. Uh, I don't get why we're trying to go after comedians. I mean, you know, <laughs> school principals and airline pilots, maybe. Uh, but comedians, comedians make jokes and they make people uncomfortable. And sometimes when you're uncomfortable, you do the most thinking. So I think comedians are supposed to make you uncomfortable. And that's where the thinking and the conversation takes place. You were able to do something else, but and and, and but besides going on stage, have you noticed comedians uh, checking themselves on stage? Do, when you talk to these guys and the women that, that do stand up, when you guys before you go on, are you you saying I'm getting rid of this? I have to get rid of this material. I, I can't afford to be canceled. I can't get a club owner telling me I can't book you anymore. Yeah, yeah, I had a. It, it's true. Uh, I've I've seen it happen. I I think it's the, the it's the death of creativity. Whether you're telling a joke writing a song or, or painting a painting, you don't want the artist to stop and think, what are people going to think of this painting when I'm done? Or what are they going to think of this song when I'm done? Or this joke, like, how am I going to be judged for this? So the worst place you can be creatively is up in your head. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, just imagine you're at a dinner party and you have something to say, and maybe it's something funny or witty or interesting. And right before you say it, you think, how's this going to go over? Am I going to be asked to leave this dinner party? Is this, is this going to be good? Will I be able to finish my entree? And at a certain point, you think, screw it. I'm not even going to say what I was going to say, which is kind of the point we're getting to now, which, of course, just stifles creativity and it stifles conversation. Yeah, the one guy that doesn't get stifled much is you. And lastly, I know I'm putting you in an odd spot because every late night host is a friend of yours. But there was a column in the New York Times, Who Broke Stephen Colbert? After Jon Stewart went out and said the Wuhan lab, of course it came from the Wuhan lab. Stephen Colbert got so upset he actually tried to stop, according to the writer. And what I saw, I agree, Jon Stewart from going forward. And we know they're best friends. So I want you to hear, he wrote, who broke Stephen Colbert and who really broke late night TV? They're not laughing anymore. They're now clapping. What happened to the equal opportunity offender late night host? Here's what the writer said. Mainstream comedy has evolved, especially when it comes to public affairs, from becoming liberal to becoming party line. Do you, find, do you agree with that? When you watch late night television, is it party line? <clears throat> yeah, well, I'll tell you what's going on. If you... If you host a late night show, you're involved with a late night show. The biggest important subject you have is bookings. Are you going to get George Clooney on your show or are you going to get Scott Baio on your show? It's all about bookings, right? So think about the politics of some of the biggest actors and biggest stars. You know, you want Hillary Clinton. You want the, the royal family. You want Prince Harry. You know, you want... Ben Affleck. Uh, you, 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 yeah, you and Affleck. You, you want Barbara Streisand. Well, if you want those people, and you, imagine just getting up there and going, I, I voted for Donald Trump. I like his policies. You would never book another one of those celebrities ever again. I agree with everything you said. I'm just saying that for the, that was the case forever, I thought, where Carson would not worry about it. He, if Reagan was his friend. He'd insult him. He made fun of Jimmy Carter, and he still got the best bookings. And he was going against Joey Bishop, and he was going against Merv Griffin for a while and Dick Cavett, and they still were able to exist and be funny. Right. Well, it, it, obviously, that was pre, you know, that's back when everyone was an American first and a politician. 
second. You know what I mean? That's where you were an American first and a de- Democrat second or an American first and a Republican True. second. And now everyone's political affiliation is first and the American may not be in the top five. So now that things have shifted and again, you're trying to book a list talent. Why would you even take the chance of going down that road if it could impact your bookings to even 10 percent? It's hard. You kind of sold your comedy soul to get that show, I guess. Adam Carolla has not. He's a host of the Adam Carolla podcast. He's going to be on Canceled in the USA with Dan Bongino. And Adam Carolla's uh, book is I'm Your Emotional Support Animal, Navigating All Our All-Woke, No-Joke Culture. Adam, always great to talk to you. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. All right. Go get him. Uh, I want to Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.